Hi everyone, it's nice to be with you tonight. This is our final meeting uh, this year for our home groups. And I want to encourage you, uh, each of you, to fill out one of the surveys, uh, the assessments we're doing. Uh, you have a yellow paper and that's for uh, everyone who attends. Please, even if you only attended this one, please uh, let us know how you feel about the whole program and, uh, and the partnership we're doing with the, uh, uh, the homes, okay? And uh, let me know exactly how you feel. Uh, if you can do that, you can turn it on the back side and write it and fill it up with words. I don't care. Um, also, I want each of our sticky buddies and the leaders, the home leaders, to uh, fill one out. Now, they have a, uh, a different color paper, but uh, everyone should fill one out, okay? And so if you want to just take a minute and pass those out, you can stop the, uh, stop the CD for now or the video for now and, uh, and look at it, okay? Thanks. All right, let's get started. Tonight, I would like to talk to you uh, a little about, um, based on what we shared on Sunday, Tim and I had an interview uh, where Tim interviewed me, Pastor Tim uh, was asking me questions. I was trying to give a few answers about the experience that I had. Uh, and one of his questions was about tragedy. Can you give thanks to God in the midst of tragedy? And uh, there are many examples in the scriptures of people who faced very difficult things. But I look, I'd like us to look a little deeper at what it really means uh, to live by faith. And uh, the reason I want to go there is because I think it's a living faith that causes us to prevail and overcome the difficulties we face in our life. Uh, if your faith is strong, you can make it through anything. And... Uh, the best chapter on faith uh, that really summarizes faith for us is found in Hebrews chapter 11. If you'd like to turn there in your Bibles, I'm going to go there in my, uh, on my phone, my Bible phone. And it's uh, Hebrews 11 and verse 8. And it says, It was by faith that Abraham obeyed when God called him to leave home and go to another land that God would give him as his inheritance. He went without knowing where he was going. Verse 9. And even when, his, when he reached the land that God promised him, he lived there by faith, for he was like a foreigner living in tents. And so did Isaac and Jacob, who inherited the same promise. Now verse 10. Abraham was confidently looking forward to a city with eternal foundations, a city designed by and built by God. And this verse 10 is very important to me. It says, Abraham was confidently looking forward to a city with eternal foundations. Tonight, I'd like to ask you a simple question. Are you living for the here and now? Or are you living for the there that is like Abraham did, are you living for the there and later? Here and now or there and later? People who live for the here and now are shaken to the very core. If this is all we have in life, I can see why you would feel very disturbed if something happens in your life that takes away from the here and now. You see, I think we live in a world, in a country especially, where it's all about what's happening right now. Where It's all about what I have, what I can possess, uh, what's mine today, and the experiences of the moment. But the Christian lives with a deeper awareness that this life is soon going to be over. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. And so there is a otherliness or a otherworldliness that the Christian lives with. And Abraham is the example of faith that takes us out of our present moment. And if we read the whole chapter of Hebrews 11, we're grasped by the fact that these people endured and suffered all kinds of horrible things because they were not living for the present moment. They were living for a world 
to come. And Abraham here in this, these verses, verse 10, it says of him that he was expecting, he was waiting for a heavenly kingdom or God's building that would be built for eternal, uh, for God's eternal purpose. And so that we gain from that, that Abraham was a man of faith and he was living not just for the here and now, but for the eternal. So I want you to discuss among yourself what this might mean. Three things that we notice in the text that I just read was first of all, God called Abraham to leave. We understand that God has called us as well as Christians to leave the sinful lifestyle, the worldly lifestyle, and the world perspective behind. So in similar way, we are also called to leave. Secondly, it says God took him to another land and gave him his inheritance. So in this world, even though we are living in it, we are not to attach ourselves to the things of this world. And so when they are taken away from us, we might grieve, we might suffer, but we understand that we're here only as foreigners and strangers moving through this world because there's coming a day when we're going to live with Christ eternally. And so Abraham was taken to this other land. And likewise, we are brought into a counterculture, you might say. We are brought into a Christian community, into a place where we share in the inheritance. We taste of the heavenly gift. We experience what is in the life to come, yet it's not fully here. And so Abraham, it says the third thing, that he reached the land, but he still lived as a foreigner in it. And in like manner, you and I are living in the land of this world, living for Christ, but there is coming a day when we're going to be out of here. And the fullness of Christ will come. The fullness of joy will come. And so the question is, are you living for the here and now, or are you living for the there and then? And uh, that's what I'll close with today. God bless you.